Well, hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna share with you step-by-step -step instructions for the right way to remove a tick. Yes, there is a right way and there are many wrong ways. Ticks are small insect-like creatures that live in highly wooded areas and grassy areas. And if you walk through these places, a tick can attach to your skin and start feeding off of your blood. Now, the majority of ticks out there don't cause illness, but a subset of them can cause serious illnesses such as Lyme's disease and Rocky Mountain spotted fever. Removing a tick as soon as possible is essential to keeping you from getting sick, but you've got to do it the right way. So what is the right way to remove a tick that is attached to your skin? You're gonna to wanna to get yourself a pair of tweezers and you're going to want to first sterilize them with rubbing alcohol or an alcohol prep pad. Then you're gonna to wanna to grasp the tick as close to the skin surface as possible and you're gonna just pull out gently with steady traction and pressure. You don't wanna squeeze, crush, or twist as you're doing this because you risk uh, leaving some of the tick mouth parts behind. After you have removed the tick, you want to dispose of it properly. You can put it either in a Ziploc bag, seal it up tight, I recommend actually submerging it in uh, rubbing alcohol and actually keeping it in a sealed jar. And you wanna date that jar with the date that you removed the tick. Why the heck would you wanna hold on to a dead tick in a jar? The reason is, God forbid, you happen to develop symptoms of illness, well, you can bring that tick to the doctor's office. They can identify the type of tick, and if necessary, they can send that tick to the laboratory to find out if the tick was carrying anything that might have made you sick. Whatever you do when you remove a tick, you don't wanna crush it between your fingers because you risk dislodging those mouth parts into your fingers. Once you have removed the tick, you just wanna clean the area with a little bit of soapy water and that is all you need to do. Now that you know the proper steps to remove a tick, what are some wrong ways to remove a tick? You've probably heard of popular folk remedies like taking a match to the tick, maybe covering it with Vaseline or tape or clear nail polish. You don't wanna do any of these things. These folk remedies maintain that doing this will cause the tick to back out. It's actually the opposite. What it does, if you take a match to the skin or if you try and, and, and seal the tick on there with tape, clear nail polish, or Vaseline, it freaks the tick out and it actually burrows down a little bit deeper and clamps down tighter, sucking at your blood. And it actually increases the risk that you get sick from the tick. Not to mention the obvious that taking a match to your skin, eh, you might just burn yourself, which is not good either. Now that you know the right way to remove a tick, how worried should you be if you find and remove a tick attached to your skin surface? Don't worry too much. Uh, the majority of tick bites out there are not likely to cause illness. And by identifying and removing the tick as soon as possible, you substantially reduce your risk of getting sick. You see, the risk of getting sick from a tick bite is directly related to the duration of time the tick is attached to your skin. So if you remove the tick in a timely fashion, it's very unlikely that you become sick. The most common tick-borne infections are not transmitted to humans very quickly once the tick has attached and started sucking at your blood. For example, the most common tick-borne illness in the United States is Lyme disease. And in order to get Lyme disease from an infected tick, the tick has to be sucking on your blood for greater than 24 hours. So if you've identified a tick and it's not yet engorged and you remove it, you're unlikely to get sick from that tick. Infection risk is not just a function of the amount of time the tick has been attached to you. It's also a function of the proportion of ticks in the given area that are actually infected. So you may have a tick bite and you may be in an area where there are very few ticks that actually are infected. In the case of Lyme disease, the way it works is the tick, if it's infected, it's infected with a bacteria called Borrelia burgdorferi that lives in the tick's gut. When the tick attaches to your skin and starts sucking on your blood, the longer it's there sucking on your blood, the bacteria in the tick's gut can make its way up to the tick's salivary gland and eventually be introduced into your body. So that is why it takes some time for it to be transmitted to you. So if you catch the tick early and you remove it effectively doing these steps that we just outlined, you substantially reduce your risk of getting sick. What are some signs and symptoms that you might be coming down with an illness related to your tick bite? Some of the most common signs and symptoms of a tick bite related 
illness would be fevers, chills, joint pains and aches, joint stiffness, and a rash. These symptoms tend to appear within two to three weeks of the tick bite. Now, if you develop a rash within this time, I highly, highly encourage you to take a photograph of the rash as soon as possible and photograph the rash if it changes. Alert your healthcare provider so that you can be seen immediately. Once you're able to see your healthcare provider, not only will you have that tick saved in the jar with the date it was attached so that they can look at it, they can send it to the lab if they need to to find out if it was infected, and they have the photographs of your rash so they can put the pieces together and hopefully get you on the path to figuring out if uh, what you have is or is not related to the tick bite. Ticks can bite any time of the year, but tick bites are most common in the months of April through September. And now that we're entering into the summer months, you may be interested in pursuing some different outdoor activities over summer vacation, things like hiking, camping. Uh, maybe you're traveling somewhere where they have a lot of ticks. Not only is it important that you uh, remove ticks as soon as possible, doing the steps again that we outlined here, but I'm gonna share with you guys some tips that are high yield for actually preventing the tick from ever getting on you in the first place. If you're doing any hiking or walks, you wanna make sure you stick to the center of the trail. You don't wanna go wandering off into these grassy areas. That's where the ticks are hanging out. If you're spending time in grassy areas or wooded areas, you want to wear long sleeves and long pants. Importantly, tuck your long pants into your socks when you're walking around. I know you may think it looks dorky, but it can really, really save you because you see ticks, they tend to grab onto you like your ankles and then start crawling up your leg under, under your pants. So tuck them into your socks so that you limit tick access. If you're new here, welcome. On this channel, I am a huge, huge advocate as a dermatologist for sun protection, including sun protective clothing. But the sun protective clothing, the long sleeves, the long pants are also gonna help you in reducing the risk that a tick is gonna make its way onto you. Choose light or bright colored clothing. This is great because it allows you to better see any ticks that might be crawling around on your clothes, trying to get access to you so you can, you can get rid of them right away before they even have time to attach to your skin. Whereas if you wear dark colored clothing, A, you're gonna overheat in the summertime. B, you're not going to be able to see the ticks as easily. And C, dark clothing will also attract a lot of mosquitoes, which love dark clothing. And they too, like ticks, harbor a lot of illnesses that you want to avoid. Don't forget to wear a hat. You know, especially if you're walking through wooded areas, ticks can come down onto your scalp. And of course, coming from me, you know, that broad brimmed hat also will protect you from those UV rays. Make sure you use tick repellent if you are going to be spending time in tick dense areas. You can actually treat your clothing with 0.5% per, permethrin. I highly suggest doing this if you are somebody who hikes or camps, treat your pants, your boots, uh, your, your jackets, your hats, you can do this. Um, just take the clothing outdoors and treat it with permethrin while you're in a well-ventilated area. That way it reduces the risk of ticks coming onto you. Also treat any exposed skin with deep containing insect repellents to repel not only ticks, but also mosquitoes, which again, carry other, other bad illnesses. You wanna look for 20 to 30% DEET. And make sure you follow the manufacturer's instructions in terms of the frequency of how to reapply it because uh, reapplication of DEET is much different than reapplication of one of my favorite things on earth, sunscreen, which y'all know at this point needs to be reapplied every two hours. DEET is going to be reapplied a lot less frequently. Um, so make sure you're following the instructions um, uh, of the product that, that you have chosen but you wanna look for 20 to 30% DEET. I cannot emphasize enough the importance of checking your body thoroughly for ticks. Not only your body, but that of your children and your pets, especially your dog. A lot of people, you know, hike and whatnot with dogs. You wanna do full body checks. And if you're gonna be outdoors, say camping, you wanna do this pretty frequently. Um, that way you catch them early. If you catch them when they're crawling around, great. If, if they haven't attached, get rid of them right away. If you are you know, outdoors, camping, on a camping trip, you wanna be doing this pretty frequently, actually, especially if you're in an area with a lot of ticks. And what you wanna do is get a handheld mirror or, you know, grab your spouse, a loved one to help you out. You're gonna to wanna to check your entire body. You're gonna be looking um, like on your lower legs, your arms for ticks crawling around, but ticks love, 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 love warm, moist environments. 
So places that ticks love to attach that you really wanna look at are going to be behind the knees, uh, in the groin area, between the legs, like between the thighs, because again, they, they get on your ankle and then they crawl up your pants and they, they, they like to bite and, and latch on like in the groin area between the legs. Also ladies, under the breast, ticks love, love to latch on there. I'll never forget, I had a patient who came in, said, doc, I've got these skin tags under my breast. Can you help me out and remove some of them? They're really irritating. I said, sure. Turn around, take a look. She had a tick engorged under her breast, thought it was a skin tag. So definitely look under the breast, under the arms, throughout your scalp, and around your ear. Again, check your children too in a similar fashion. When you're checking your dog, ticks love to uh, latch on around the base of their tail, um, look around their paws, between their toes, uh, on the undersides of their legs, under their belly, around their ears, and around their eyes. Also, check your gear for any ticks. Your backpacks, your jackets, your hats. When you get home, put any unwashed clothing, fabrics, into the dryer on high heat for at least 10 minutes. This will kill any ticks that might be crawling around that could otherwise make their way back to you and attach to your skin. If you need to wash your clothing, make sure you wash it in hot water, not cold or warm. Cold or warm water is not gonna kill those ticks. Another thing that can significantly reduce the risk of uh, getting sick from a tick bite is actually to take a shower within two hours of coming inside because any ticks that might be crawling around on you, they can get rinsed off of the skin. All right guys, so now you know the right way to remove a tick, the wrong way to remove a tick, how to prevent them from attaching in the first place. You know what to look out for in terms of the most common signs and symptoms of tick-borne illness. Illness. I want you guys to enjoy the summer months, camping, hiking, enjoy the outdoors. I don't want people to be phobic of the outdoors. Now that you have this knowledge, you can be empowered so that you're not, you know, putting yourself at risk for tick-borne illness, but you are proactive in preventing tick-borne illnesses. They are on the rise in the U.S. Most ticks don't actually have infections in them, but some do, and they do carry serious infections. So it does need to be taken seriously. When you are enjoying time outdoors in tick dense areas, by examining your skin regularly, removing any attached ticks expeditiously, and by doing regular tick checks and following these steps, you can drastically, drastically, drastically reduce the chances that you will become sick with a tick-borne illness. I hope this video was informative to you guys and that you're gonna have a great summer. I know it, enjoy the outdoors. Um, on the end slate, speaking of enjoying the outdoors, I'm going to link my video from last year on how to prevent a sunburn. So don't miss that one. Uh, but if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.